That cackle. You're too, my too big for my your woman, butt. My woman's cackle. That was the my Leatherman hung on it. I know, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> There it is. Well, I made it to the northern tool with the crack -dome. So this is my struggle for upgrading the sawmill. Is the shelves are pretty bare. Uh, I went to Harbor Freight. They're out of the 420s. Uh, and I'm here at Northern Tool, and they have this Irontron 420. But this one doesn't have electric start, and I, gosh, I think it's going to be hard to pull. So I ended up getting this one, which is a 420 cc with electric start, made by Power Horse. And, and they're basically very similar engines. Uh, they're just, a lot of them are rebranded. This is very, very similar to the one at Harbor Freight, to the point I think a lot of the parts would interchange. So let's get it home. Hey, welcome back to the channel. We had talked in the past about upgrading the sawmill to a larger engine. And I actually went and ordered an 18 horsepower engine. Actually, first I went to Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight, the Predator 13 horsepower engine was my choice. I have a local Harbor Freight here, so that's what I wanted. However, they're out of stock to like next year. So then I ordered a um, Duramax, it's a blue, old blue engine. It's 18 horsepower electric start from Amazon. And that, that engine was supposed to come in last week. And then I got an email saying, hey, it ain't coming. So I ended up finding this engine at Northern Tool. This is the Power Horse, and it's 13 and a half horsepower. So let's unbox this thing. That's dirty. So here's the drum. And we got this drum off. We, we had to pull the clip ring off and then grab the puller to pull this off. And we still... Uh, we forgot to push record so you can't see that, but it just this pulled right off and, and this bearing This is our, our problem if we hadn't broke this we could actually probably reuse this uh, for an, another application But this bearing is shot. It's you can see the grease on the inside and also it's the you can feel it It's really the needle bearings are rolling bad. So here's our next problem It's not really a problem for today, but a problem for the future. This shaft is seized on I mean we have put the pullers on it, done everything we know to do. I have soaked it with penetrating oil. The It's seized onto the shaft. It's very simple to take the engine off. These are the safety connectors here, or the safety switches. You got a safety switch in the front that you can just hit and it shuts the engine off and you have the safety switch on the door. If the door comes open, it will take uh, turn the engine off. And I, I probably am gonna wire those up. Uh, I just have to figure out how that wiring harness works. But basically what it does is it, pri it provides a ground to the ignition system, which you know keep, it turns the spark plug off so it can't run. So that's a, we'll probably do that. But right now all it has is four, uh, four screws and they're, they're turning. Ready? Mm -hmm. Good? Turn it loose? Yeah. All right, here we go. Well, this engine's ready to come on. Not very much, just a few bolts. Spark wire there. Jumper. And we'll put this back. That's the only way to turn this thing off. Doesn't have an on and off switch. So whatever it goes on next, I have to have an on and off switch. Let me go through and check everything. I think it's mounted in the front somewhere, mm -hmm. between the front and the... Come out that thing. There it goes. That thing that won't come off. There it is. Yay! Whoop! There it is. Let's consider the lighter. The other one. So this system was made for... It's the same cabling, the same... All the lifting capacity is the same as the OS23, the OS27, and the OS31. 
and the OS31 has the 13 and a half horsepower engine on it with electric start and the battery. So I feel pretty comfortable that this system is gonna lift without any, having any, any issues because it's, they just make one system to fit all of them. So where I spilled the oil. So they see here, it's got the different footprints for the small, what I call a small block and a big block engine. Um, what we're putting back on it is a big block engine. So we'll be using these, I think we're gonna be using these, these uh, holders here, which were easier, will be easier to take on and off. Because the other ones were close to the rail and they were paying the butt to get the screws out. All right. Okay, so the one guy said that he did have to cut a hole. Looks like he would have to also because it's not Yeah, yeah, he said that he up. had to cut a hole bigger. Okay, so what I'm doing now is get ready to take the plasma cutter and I'm gonna cut out my mark here, or cut out the uh, opening for the new motor. And I, I wanna try to make this as, I say motor, you guys are gonna bust me out for saying motor. In the South, we call everything a motor. I know it's an engine, so all my, my text out there, I got it, it's an engine. But we're gonna cut this hole out for the new engine, but I wanna clean all this sawdust, leftover sawdust up, I don't want a fire hazard. So I might use this plasma cutter in a good little bit. exact same size so I'm going to use it as a, a guide and I'm not going to mess around with it I'm going to cut a big old cut up here I don't want to cut it twice Alright, so what I'm going to do is put this welding blanket over just a little tank back here because it's got diesel in it. Um, and the, not that I'm worried about the, the tank catching on fire, the diesel catching on fire, but I don't want to melt the tank. That's my biggest concern. So, diesel, that diesel's cold and it would be unbelievably hard. Catch diesel on fire. I get so many people. You're using diesel for cutting, uh, cutting, cooling the cutting blade, and I'm like, yeah, but it's not uh, very flammable. Diesel's not very flammable. I have a tool that you 
drill a hole in it and you make it go around, but it just, it's not going to fit in that. That's like working flat. So, yeah, that is completely ugly. I'm so embarrassed, but you know what? No, no one's ever going to see this. I'm not going to tell anybody if you guys don't tell anybody. I mean, you guys got to promise me that you won't tell anybody about how bad that looks. You see my grinder? Plastic cutter is so great. My, too, too big my, woman, my woman's cackle. That was the my Leatherman hung on. I know, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, I think it's right around 75, 80 pounds, and it fills every bit of it. And then when you add fluid in it and then fuel, probably pushing a, a good 80, 85 pounds. Just guessing. Uh, all I know is when I pick it up, it's awkward and it's heavy. The, where the battery's gonna go, stuff like that. But I think we are, I think we are on to something. What do you think? Good. So I played this earlier. I just set the engine up so you guys didn't see that part. But what I was really impressed with is that it takes really no more effort to raise and lower this now than it did before. So that's a good sign. So we set it all the way down where there's no... It is heavier, there's no doubt, but this system is set up for the, the 10 horsepower engine, the, and the, uh, I think it's a 13 horsepower and a 14 horsepower engine uh, for the bigger sawmills. So I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. So I am definitely going to need to put a diverter here uh, because it's going to blow directly at this post and I don't want this post to be getting hot. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to take this diverter off. This is basically a universal diverter. You can buy them. So I'm going to take this one off and put on that one. This is very, very promising. Very, very exciting. I think I've got some carriage bolts that I can put through from the bottom that's going to allow me to uh, tighten. No, I don't know if I can tighten it from the top. Of it. I really need to get some pivot in on this side. This engine's got a little bit more space to work.
All right, we should be able to move the engine and straighten it up just in case, and then we'll have to tighten it down afterwards. There was literally not enough room for the sawmill, uh, between the sawmill and the shaft to go in. I was gonna have to cut something out. And then the blade is gonna come across the top here, and it, 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 it can ride a, across the top of this pulley, but it can't touch the pulley. So I've ordered these two clutches. This clutch, as you can see, is much lighter weight. Uh, and it's not, you know, it's just not as heavy. It's a, it's a light duty clutch, but it's considerably smaller. It has the one inch shaft that I need. Uh, this clutch is still has, and this clutch also has a three inch pulley. So that's gonna slow the, uh, that's gonna slow the blade down. However, I'm not really too much worried about that because uh, the engine's gonna have a lot more horsepower and uh, it's gonna have a lot more torque to lug, lug through. I don't think it's gonna drop. I think it'll just get one speed and stay there. So this clutch is considerably heavier duty, and but its uh, its base is not very much bigger than the pulley diameter is itself. So I th I'm gonna try to make this one work because obviously this is a much heavier clutch. Um, it has four clutches inside versus the two. Uh, it's just made the, it's rated up to like 15 horsepower. So let's see what this does. We gotta figure it out. We have, you know, we're making this sawmill a hot rod sawmill. And uh, so it's, there's not every part perfectly made for this. So we're having to figure out things and improvise. So I believe today's the day. We have all the parts in stock, uh, in stock, are here at the, at the shop. And we're gonna do our best to uh, put this engine on permanently, uh, put the belts on, then go ahead and put a blade on it and do a, a run here at the shop with a blade going around, uh, hoping for the best. All right, this engine is already uh, has already provided us with a, a port for a ground kill. And basically what it does is if ground is applied to this port, at any time in the, the engine is running, it kills the ignition. So that's the way these safety switches work. This is the safety switch from the front cover. If, you, if, it's, if it's triggered, it provides ground. We'll go ahead and plug that in here. And it also has a daisy chain on it. And the reason that is, is because uh, of the kill switch on the top. So here we have another one, but the only problem is, is the way it was originally set up, it's kind of backwards. So this one is a, this is a female here, and this one's a female here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, pop this dude off. Strip that wire back a little bit. slide on twist that up just a little bit All right, so we got a new mail put these two together and that's good now all we need is to uh, find a, a ground for this, but I'm not gonna mess with the ground right now because I still have to put the battery box into place. So this is our quick fix. Uh, it's a little basket and we put a little piece of wood in the bottom of it so that uh, it won't damage the bottom of, the, of this. So we're gonna put this strap onto the basket and that should strap the, bat, the battery down. And So this is not gonna be like bouncing too much. It'll go down the road every once in a while, but I'm not too, too worried about it. Okay. All right, so we've got the kill switch wired in. This is our, our battery. We went ahead with a smaller battery. This is a 200 uh, cranking amp battery. We put a little piece of wood in the bottom of this little basket and then put a battery strap on it to hold it down in there. So it's really good and secure. And I like this because it's lighter. So this head's not picking up, even though it's rated for the other battery, I think this is a better alternative. So we've got our kill switches hooked up, got them grounded, got everything's grounded pro properly. And I'm gonna put the key in here. Uh, 
let's see here. They got blood on everything. So I, I am, I'm bleeding. So I'm doing the job right. I always say if you don't bleed a little bit when you do a job, you didn't do it right. So choke is on. Throttle's fair. Let's just see if it turns over. So that's the first time we crank this thing. And we'll reroute all of this. We're gonna figure something out here because this the way this goes up and down, it's always been a problem uh, from the time we started with this thing. I don't I just not, never really liked how this wire uh, hung out. Let me take a zip tie and like tie it to that little battery box there. That'll keep it more permanently secure. Isn't that what I said earlier? I didn't know. I wouldn't listen to you. I don't listen to you. What? That was supposed to be my inside voice. Oh. Okay, we're ready to start on the other side of this thing. All right, what I'm doing is I'm putting, uh, I'm gonna put this used blade on. Uh, this, that's what, in case it throws uh, the blade, I don't want to just destroy your brand new blade because these things are expensive now. And they're hard to get. Last like, time I looked, Frontier was out of blades. I'm sure they're gonna get them back in. But so it's got all new belts, got all new bearings. Everything is supposed to be spot on. Praying that it's gonna cut like it did when I first got it. So now I'm gonna go over here and tighten up the. the Bandsaw tensioner. Go from there. That's where it touches. So there's half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, five. So we're, we've been adjusting the track of this and I've got my teeth where just the tooth portion of the of the saw blade is out and this is an old blade but it's it's gonna get as close to when we get to the uh, farm and put new blades on it that we won't have to do a whole lot of adjustments but we're really really close right now really close so I think we need to at this point is start the engine and then uh, let this thing spin. All right, and now is the, the moment. We're gonna open the garage door. It's like 26 degrees outside. So my first test is to start the engine at an idle and then hit the kill switch that make sure that we've got the kill switch wired correctly. Clear. Kill switch. kill switch works. So the next thing to do is start slowly idling it up. I don't have the, the cable hooked up. We have to order a, uh, a kit for the cable. Uh, so we'll end up doing that here pretty soon. But I'm, right now I'm just gonna manually control the throttle. The kill switch is off. We gotta turn the choke on. It's still a little cold. Okay, we're
here in the floor still. All the tools out. So the bearings, they feel good. They're cool on both sides. I already checked. The blade is cool. Island cool. The slip clutch is cool because it's not slipping. Obviously, we're not putting it on a load yet. Um, the blade's tracking really good. So it's ran, it ran a good long time and stayed right on track. Uh, I won't say that it's good, but it's very promising. I won't say that it's fixed until we put it, put a log through it and see what happens. But right now, it's very promising, very promising. We're gonna we'll carry it out tomorrow and uh, set it back on the sawmill uh, tracks. You gonna do a happy dance tomorrow then? I'm never doing a happy dance, <laughs> ever. You guys don't wanna see me do a happy dance. That happy dance is just, you know, off camera. <laughs> so, we've got a, we've doubled the horsepower. We have a hot rod sawmill now. I'm going to start all my intros now. Welcome to the Hot Pot Sawmill. What do you think? I think. It's pretty promising, right? Mm hmm. It's just see you all get it there. It smokes. Yeah, it smokes. It smells. You correct me. It's like, it's making smell. It's the first time the engine's ever been started. It's burning all the oil off of it. At least I noticed it. I felt like I, I seen the, you know, the... The blade is not near, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's fast, but it's not as fast as it was before. But I, like I said, we've doubled the horsepower and probably uh, tripled the torque. And I don't think it's gonna, and, but, and, but we're not cutting anything any wider. So I, I think it's gonna pull through the log so much better. And if not, then Lord have mercy, I don't know what we're gonna do. You can go up if I would at Lowe's. About a loose. That's what we're gonna do. That's it. We're, we're done. Done with it. You're not getting my scrap in the garage. So this blade comes across the top here, and it's literally got a quarter of an inch between the blade and the top of that pulley, which is plenty because it's not going to touch. But uh, still, we move that up one inch for sure. Take the pressure off of it for tonight. Tomorrow we'll go out to the property and set this back on the tracks and see what happens. And we're along John's tomorrow. Yeah, it's gonna be cold. Let's actually start warming up a little bit. It's what's lovely about Tennessee. I got a big mess cleaned up now. Yeah, big mess. I won't show you the rest of That's it. That's the reason I want a 30, I want the 30 by 40 shop done. So you can make a bigger mess. I need more room. He just needs I got a lot of man toys. You know, you need to organize. That's your problem. 